So we are uh, continuing our discussion on the philosophy of Ramanuja. It's called Vishistha Dvaita philosophy. So I think I already um, uh, gave two, three sessions on uh, some of the uh, fundamental doctrines of Vishistha Dvaita. And I think the last session I gave an important discussion on prapatti and bhakti. These are two important concepts in the Ramanuja system. So according to him, you know, as I mentioned earlier, these are two important principles, bhakti, the devotion, and prapatti, and self-surrender. Now, uh, the most important uh, uh, statement on prapatti, that is self-surrender, that occurs in the Bhagavad Gita, on which Ramanuja uh, wrote a very important commentary. That statement comes uh, uh, towards the end of the 18th chapter, not exactly at the end. Uh, I think it's the 66th verse of Bhagavad Gita. And the verse is this, Sarvadharman Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Vraja Aham Tua Sarva Pape Bhu Moksha Shyami Ma Sucha This is the statement. Which actually says that you give up all your sadhana, spiritual disciplines, and you take complete refuge in me. You practice this ultimate discipline of self-surrender, uh, it's called prapatti, that we already discussed and defined in the earlier sessions. And then you, do have, you have no room to worry you will have no problem. I shall liberate you. I shall liberate you by giving you moksha. Oh, this is the statement. Now, this is a very pro profound statement in the Ramanuja system. Now, here, if you look at the statement, Sarva Dharman Parityajya, give up all dharmas. Now, uh, if you read an English translation, which can be terribly misleading. It may tell you, give up all dharmas. And then you go to Monia Williams and Apte and find out dharma means righteousness. So you give up all righteousness and I shall give you liberation. So it can be terribly, very profoundly, catastrophically uh, misleading. But that is not the implication here. What Lord Krishna is telling uh, uh, Arjuna is this. If you feel that you are incapable of practicing any of the disciplines that I have already outlined in the early chapters, Bhakti Yoga as a very important discipline was outlined and explained in the 12th chapter, Karma Yoga in the 3rd chapter and also in many other places, Dhyana Yoga Purushottama Yoga and of course Jnana Yoga and uh, Raj Yoga, all these are being expounded and described in, in many, so many different ways by Lord Krishna. Now, suppose you reach a stage where you feel you are incapable of doing any of this. That is, Akinchanyam and Ananyagadittum. And you also feel that you are totally uh, uh, incapable of doing anything. Totally you are a destitute, helpless. And you, and you don't want to uh, turn in any other direction. You want to look upon the Lord as the only refuge. And you surrender Atman Nikshepa. And you feel yourself completely lost, Karpanya. And also you have strong faith, Mahavishwasa. Reksha Siddhi Vishwasa Goptrutta Varanam Tatha. And also you look upon me as your protector. Then you give up everything and take refuge in me and I shall take care of your 
spiritual responsibility now the important principle to remember is this is not a concept it is not a doctrine it is not an idea is a natural state of one spiritual evolution along the path of uh, devotion devotional disciplines again it is not supposed to be a national ideal rather it is a spiritual discipline to be practiced by an individual spiritual seeker now this state of total surrender looking upon oneself as completely helpless destitute and looking upon god as the only refuge this idea may be found in many many other traditions many other mystical traditions so it is a state of spiritual evolution that one attains and not some not a doctrine that you believe in people may simplify this is you believe in you are helpless take refuge in god well it doesn't work that way because a person a spiritual seeker uh, who takes refuge in god should have already exhausted himself and all his available means all other tools at his disposal then only he will reach a state of uh, this ananyagaditvam he has knocked at all other doors they didn't open finally he is knocking at the door of the lord and it opens and he should knock at the door with that state of mind where he should think completely uh, himself he should consider himself to be helpless totally incapable of all these of any other work no so i shall try to uh, before uh, explaining this charama shloka it is uh, it is in the uh, 18th chapter of the gita sarva dharman paridija before that i shall try to uh, give a, 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 sim- a, a, a maybe a, a simple idea of the distinction differences between bhakti and prapatti now bhakti yoga is a, is a discipline you should study its scriptures you should go to temple or a church or any place of worship you should pray you should practice nishkarma karma nimitta matram bhava savvishajin you should look upon yourself as an instrument in the hands of god and then you should you also need an ability to study the scriptures and also an ability to practice spiritual disciplines in fact that's why lord krishna says in the in the 12th chapter santushta satatam yogi yadatma dhanishcheha bhakta a devotee should be always in a state of total contentment fulfillment and also he should always practice self restraint and also surprisingly he needs a strong will power his mind should be made of steel because you have to face a lot of difficulties you are going on a pilgrimage you should have the determination that you reach your destination you are beginning to study an important devotional classic you need a lot of hard work discipline you should persist in your studies sometimes there will be difficulties still you should continue again you want to uh, pray and you want to go to you want to go to a nearby place of worship the weather is bad still you should put faith, full faith on god and a strong will power you should go and pray and also it is very important uh, that there is there are certain formalities that you should follow you should have a lot of patience and through this the spiritual disciplines you exhaust your prarabdha karmas so you know with the three uh, the three 
types of karmas behind our uh, human existence uh, this karma is divided into sanjida prarabdha and agamika uh the 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 cause of uh, the present embodiment this life where we are born what we are doing our tendencies all these are uh, manifestations of prarabdha karmas karmas which have already started fruition they are already manifesting um and there are still karmas which have not started manifesting it is called sanjita karma accumulated karmas there are karmas that we are still going to uh, again uh, karma phalas that we are going to generate in the present life through agame karmas so through spiritual disciplines through scripture studies through puja prayers confessions or whatever may be different traditions you should exhaust the prarabdha karmas and again it is uh, it is a difficult path you can always find among great devotees who have to face lots of challenges and problems so they should have an iron will and also a person practicing bhakti yoga the path of bhakti or devotion should also practice yamas and niyamas all mentioned in the patanjali yoga sutras and then also you are not very sure that you will get liberation in this present life this is bhakti yoga it is more of a formality there is a lot of uncertainty a lot of your success depends upon your own effort your own qualities and circumstances so there can be a lot of unknown uh, dangers and challenges that is bhakti yoga but then prapatti sharanagadi it is quick fast and it's like hot line and you don't have to be well versed in the knowledge of scriptural studies related to the practice of discipline and you may feel you are not capable of getting up in the morning and prayer and meditation you are lazy or you are sick may be physically mentally handicapped so you cannot go to a church or a temple or a synagogue or a place of worship you may be you are you cannot you don't have the education to read the scriptures or devotional philosophical ideas and also in ancient times in india you find there were many restrictions there were a lot of non egalitarian uh, um, restrictions now they are all gone fortunately so uh on the other hand prapatti self surrender can be practiced by anyone by anybody self surrender there is a for example is an interesting story of a saint who was actually a hunter um is a story of a great saint who lived in india he was living in a forest he was a poor hunter illiterate but he had totally surrendered himself to the lord it so happened that there was a small temple in the thick of a, in a thick forest and every day the priest will come from the nearby village and he will perform all the formal rituals he is a devotee practicing bhakti yoga so he will take bath in the morning he will come to the temple he will offer flowers sandal paste all those things and will practice lot of austerity discipline punctuality purity everything so every day he used to offer fruits sweets use ganges ganga jal ganga water he was a, he was a temple dedicated to shiva lord shiva and in the same forest there was a hunter he was an illiterate man but he was very pure he had practice this prapatti self surrender sharanagati complete total self surrender to the lord so he also wanted to practice some spiritual discipline but he no know what to do he was a hunter he lived by hunting animals so every day he will come and he will remove all the flowers 
which are put at the uh, on the Shiva image, and you remove them, and you will offer pieces of meat, and you will offer some crude things, and you will go away. So every next day morning again the priest will come, and you will find the <laughs> the image uh, defiled. He did not know. He may he may have thought some evil people are doing mischief, but it was a great great devotee. So one day it so happened um, that the hunter felt that blood was coming out of one of the eyes of Lord Shiva. So he pierced his own eyes out and offered. Somehow, when this news came to the attention of the local king, he. at made and recognized him and the priest fell at his feet anyway these are different there are various versions many not just one story there are innumerable such stories that you find in ancient devotion tradition on the one hand is extreme orthodoxy on the other hand this sublime ideal of the highest devotion so uh, that's a uh, that's an important thing about this uh, bhakti yoga bhakti yoga is formal it needs a lot of discipline it also requires a lot of um, a, a lot of uh, important uh, formal practices uh, but at the same time it is it depends upon the purity the sin, the sincerity of the seeker again it is not assured of liberation But property self surrender is a straight road leading to liberation. That's why some of the well-known um, uh, some of the well-known uh, scriptures, important classical works on devotion philosophy, they give they give different definitions to the bhakti. So the Narada Bhakti Sutras, one important work, Narada uh, defines bhakti. Satu asmin parama prema rupa, supreme love for God, is bhakti, devotion, and shandilya. He says sa paranurak paranurakti hi ishare. The same meaning and the same supreme love, intimate love, devotion to God. This is bhakti. So uh, bhakti is a formal path. So you are not. in you are you are not reach a state where you look upon yourself as totally uh, helpless and you need uh, the help of the lord himself his grace then prapatti is the only path but prapatti can be practiced only when we reach a very high level of mental purity so an important thing when we have a doubt when we postpone or when we slowly speculate and slowly move bhakti when we can take a bold decision close the bargain then and there then prapatti self surrender but self, one should not imagine self surrender he says i would rather have that so you cannot you cannot buy it in the market so one should reach a state of spiritual evolution to be fit to practice self surrender so one should not uh, imagine well bhakti yoga the path of devotion it requires daily is a weekly discipline is going to a place of worship reading scriptures attending prayers so it's all so very difficult driving traffic delays and uh, fuel cost and so i would rather go for self surrender it is can it is not possible because self surrender happens and it is possible only when a person re- reaches that state a man a person who has surrendered himself he will have zero complaint even when there is a problem arakshitam tishthadi devarakshitam surakshitam devakatam vinashyati the famous statement in bhagavata purana the greatest it's the most most profound work on uh, hindu devotional philosophy bhagavata purana 12 skandhas 12 sections 12 books 335 chapters more than 18000 verses very profound 
it is the greatest book on hindu uh, devotional philosophy devotion tradition and there the greatest devotee prahlada says arakshitam tishtadi deiva rakshitam those who are not protected by other people by the system by the state by society but the one who ref- takes refuge in the lord he is rakshitam means he is protected arakshitam means those he is not protected by the state the society or the system as no wealth not a big uh, high profile person a simple humble man so he is arakshitam he is unprotected but he is the most well protected person rakshitam because he stands he is able to survive he is able to uh, he 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 continues to flourish in his devotional life so arakshitam tishtadi deiva rakshitam why because he is protected by the lord the one who is unprotected by other human beings but but but, but protected by god he remains intact he has no problem he survives then surakshitam deiva khadam vinashyadi those who are protected by the system by the society you know those who are born with silver spoon in their mouth you know people who are born to reach privileges rich, riches and privileges and certain inherent privileges they are protected by the social circumstances and conditions so that is surakshitam but devakhatam vinashyadi but if they are not protected by the lord by god vinashyadi devakhatam he is killed or destroyed by his own destiny so those who are not protected by other human other persons or those who are those who are unprotected by the society by the circumstances by the privilege by by the social conditions but those who are but protected by the lord they survive and those who are protected by the circumstances but unprotected by the lord they perish so this is the mind of every mystic you can imagine innumerable the stories are unending unending you know the the long stories of the christian mystics in Christ, medieval christianity most of them had to go through not all but many of them had to go through a lot of unpleasant difficult circumstances tortures and um, persecutions by the ecclesiastical the clerical hierarchy and they received only post mortem recognition so they were unprotected by the church but protected by the lord so this is important so this can you can find in all traditions you find mirabai was a great woman saint of india she had to suffer a lot she was born as a queen was a uh, so you, a highly privileged society social conditions but she suffered a lot there are many innumerable stories so uh, but then the point is uh, bhakti yoga is more elaborate a short slow process so that's why you know there are nine different methods of practicing bhakti yoga shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam mandanam dasim sakhyam atma nivedanam idi pumsar pida vishnu bhakti che navalakshana kriyade bhagavat vanya tanmane adhitam uttamam so you can find these four verses comes in the bhagavata purana this uh, very interesting so these are the nine disciplines that is uh, singing or hearing uh, about god singing about his greatness his glory remembering god all the time serving him through so many different ways to puja or any kind of devotional practices worshiping him 
and paying obeisance to him, practicing the attitude of a servant to him, cultivating an intimate spiritual love with God, and also uh, surrendering one's own efforts, everything to the Lord. All these are nine disciplines. So that's why Idi Pumsar Pida Vishnu Bhakti Sched Navalakshana. These are nine disciplines that anyone can practice in bhakti tradition. Krede Bhagavati Adva Tanmanne Adhita Muttamam. Lord Himself says, a person who offers the Lord this ninefold discipline, ninefold devotion to the Lord in truth and also in reality, in spirit, he is actually the best educated, the well-educated person. This is my opinion. So, Lord Krishna himself said in the Bhagavad Purana. So, now, this is the important difference between bhakti and prapatti. Bhakti eventually leads you to prapatti, self-surrender. But at the same time, some degree of self-surrender is a must, a most indispensable need for anyone even to take to spiritual life. Otherwise, you know, people will feel, why should I spend all the time listening to these uh, old books, or old ideas? I could rather attend a management course that may help you to maybe $1,000 extra every month, a waste of time. They are wonderful. Oh, if you have enough money, you don't need any more money. You can go for some entertainment. So, uh, we feel that way. So, unless you have a feeling of uh, well, self-surrender, Karpanya in Ramanuja's language. Karpanya means, uh, well, this are all of no use. I want something higher. And then you turn to this higher spiritual path. So, some degree of Prapatti, Saranagadi, self-surrender to some higher ideal is a must even to begin our spiritual life. But it reaches its fruition, its final uh, sublime supreme fulfillment when we actually practice Prapatti in our life. So, I shall just have a look at this uh, important verse because this is famous when you discuss prapatti or saranagadi or self-surrender, Ramanuja is very profound and his, um, his commentary is also a very well-known, celebrated commentary on this Sarvadharma and Paritejya. So, uh, that verse is the prapatti says, Ananya sadhe swabhishte mahavishwasa purvakam tadekopayeda yancha prapatti saranagadi. Vedanta, this is Vedanta Desika. Vedanta Desika is, uh, is the greatest name of Ramanuja in the Vishishta Advaita tradition. It is Ekena, Sukarena, Avalambena, Aseshapaban, uh, Nivurti Siddhehi, Anandaihi, Duskarehi, Vilambakari Bihi, Pratega Pava Nibbakanaihi, Pakti Yoga Aramba Markada, Sambadana Sia, Ashakyata, Nimitta Sho. Nimitta Shokam, Ma Katha, etc. This means uh, you reach here. So, Sarvan Dharman Parama Nisresa Sadhana Bhutan. So, that is Ramanuja said. Ramanuja himself says, you know, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Rupan Sarvan Dharman. This is Ramanuja's commentary. So, after Vedanta Desya, we are coming to Ramanuja. Of course, the supreme authority is Ramanuja himself. So, Vedanta Siga, Talpiri Chantriga, and the Gita, gloss on Ramanuja Bhashya, and also uh, Sudarsana Suri's commentary on Sri Bhashya. So, important canonical uh, works in Ramanuja system. So, Ramanuja himself says, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Rupan, Sarvan Dharman. So, Sarva Dharman Paritija, give up. Uh, after giving up all these dharmas, what are dharmas? Bhakti yoga, various forms of bhakti traditions. Sometimes, you know, technically in the Vedic tradition, uh, uh, the Ramanuja system defines 
the vidyas of upanishadic literature as different forms of bhakti disciplines bhrugi vidya um, you know varuni vidya uh, all this dahara vidya the Bhu, bhuma vidya there are different vidyas nachiketa vidya in the upanishadic vedic tradition sometimes they define these are different kinds of Uh, uh, bhakti traditions but uh, if you look at the original upanishad mantras they don't appear to be different forms of bhakti disciplines they are different forms of meditative practices as shankaracharya makes clear in his bhashyas anyway that's a different matter so he shankaracharya says vasanas but uh, not necessarily bhakti uh, forms of bhakti disciplines as maybe Uh, made out by ramanuja system when anyway, ramanuja's commentary is very very important especially when we discuss the charama shloka of, of bhagavad gita so karma yoga jnana yoga bhakti yoga rupan sarvan dharman parama nisresha sadhana bhudan mudaradhanatvena adimatra priptya yathadhikaram kurvaneva ukta ritya phala karma kartrutvaadi parityagena parityaj jamam ekam eva kartaram ആരാധ്യം പ്രാപ്യം ഉപായം ച അനുസന്ധസ്വ രാമാനുജസീസ് സോ യു റീച്ച് എ പോയിൻ്റ് യു ട്രൈ യുവർ ബെസ്റ്റ് ബട്ട് യു കിനോട്ട് പ്രാക്ടീസ് കർമ്മയോഗ സിൻസിയർ ഡിസയർ മെഡിറ്റേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് പ്രേ ബട്ട് മൈൻഡ് വോണ്ട് അലവ് യു എ സിൻസിയർ ഡിസയർ ടു പ്രാക്ടീസ് കർമ്മയോഗ ഫർ മൈൻഡ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് വില്ലിങ് ടു കോപ്പറേറ്റ് or maybe there are circumstances which uh, make it impossible for you to uh, move one inch forward you feel your life has come to a dead end there is no further progress possible it comes to it it, it comes to such a state uh, technically speaking from a purely psychological angle there are two options either you practice um there are three options either you practice sharanagati and open the straight road leading to spiritual liberation one the other one is uh one may go insane because you want to change you are not able to change your way of life the third dangerous possibility is one may continue the same old lifestyle because you give up the effort at completely so at this stage if the person the spiritual seeker is very pure like this hunter we are we, we talked about the stories very from place to place you can find something very interesting in india you find the same kind of stories can be found in different regions of the country with minor uh, differences so if a, if a spiritual seeker can ha, can practice total purity of mind in word thought and deed and he surrenders himself to the lord and his will then that would be opening a new chapter in his life it, it will have a transformative effect on his entire life so that's the greatness of this particular discipline this is vedanta deshika says sudushkarena shoched yo yena yena ishtaheduna sasadasya anumeva iti charama shloka sangraha that means if a person if a spiritual seeker if he grieves feels out of in a sorrow because he cannot employ the means and he cannot uh, use the tools at his at his disposal to move forward towards god he wants to do but he is totally helpless so what happens you know then god himself becomes for him the tool the instrument by which 
he will reach his destination so that is the spiritual significance of this ideal of prapatti uh, sharanagati so we should always remember it is uh, not a uh, an ideal or a doctrine or a concept though you find in the normal uh, lectures on ramanuja philosophy the traditional what you call sampradayika ramanuja will say you practice aginjanyam uh, um, and uh, ananya kritvam and you gets prapatti it is just like going to trade a juice and buy certain items it's not possible it's a state of human evolution it is not a make it not making a statement well i surrender myself to you if it is sincere from that moment onwards it becomes impossible for you to do anything wrong psychologically it's, it becomes impossible for you to do anything that is harmful to your spiritual life i cannot explain this more than or better uh, or uh, better uh, than by giving the illustration of one very important household a devotee uh, who is an important figure in the sri ramakrishna tradition girishchandra ghosh so classical example in many ways he resembled some of the christian mystics saint francis of assisi was soldier augustine was certainly if not a Um, I mean, not not an ideal spiritual seeker. Saint Paul again was a different person, not a spiritual person. Or Saint Augustine, or Saint Francis of Assisi. There are many like that. On the other hand, you find it the a 17th century uh, Italian mystic uh, Saint Joseph, who was Ill, almost illiterate, though not really illiterate, but not a learned person. Uh, but he because of his purity strong faith he became a great saint others they have lot of faculties physical intellectual faculties but they had many unspiritual aspects about their character but then there was a t- sudden transformation and they practiced this self surrender i'm giving examples from western tradition because in indian tradition you find hundreds and hundreds of examples in almost every province of india you find every region So, Girishchandra Ghosh is a classic example. He was a Bohemian, profligate, a drunkard, and a genius. The greatest name in in the uh, history of Bengali theatre. The all the one who actually uh, he is a pioneer in uh, in in the in the tradition of Bengali drama and plays. You know, so he was a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, but he was not willing to accept. always drunk not conscious of where he is going to sleep and where when where when he is going to get up can't do he came to sri ramakrishna and he was sincere and sri ramakrishna asked him well first the first uh, thing to do was to uh, make him give up uh, his alcoholic alcoholism but uh, sri ramakrishna told him, told him but to begin with he told him you take the name of the lord uh one the morning and evening before going to bed but he said it's not possible for him because you know he was a drunkard a drunkard and also a great mystic they transcend time and space everything you know so this man told told guru mara sri ramakrishna he can't do that because he doesn't know where he's going to sleep when he's going to get up he was sincere he didn't want to say you like do according to your instruction he said it's impossible for him Then Sri Ramakrishna asked him, "Is this once in your lifetime?" No, he can't do that. He said, "No." Then Sri Ramakrishna asked him to practice Sharanagati. The technical language used was giving the power of attorney, mean total Sharanagati, self surrender. He was a drunkard, a bohemian, but he was very sincere. So once he, uh, once he did this self surrender, Sharanagati. he became psychologically physically impossible for him to drink again he gave up alcohol and eventually he led a good life he became a great saint so 
एनीवन हु कैन प्रैक्टिस टोटल सिंसियरिटी एंड ऑनेस्टी देन द स्प्लिट सेकंड स्प्लिट सेकंड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सेल्फ सरेंडर इज इनफ बिकॉज दैट्स अ बिगिनिंग ऑफ ए न्यू लाइफ एट द एंड ऑफ द अर्लियर लाइफ फॉर सच ए पर्सन so that is one that is the real self surrender then there is another self surrender which i mentioned earlier that we normally practice at the beginning of our spiritual life when we practice bhakti yoga then also we actually believe in the reality of god otherwise you cannot uh, read a holy scripture you cannot do puja you cannot practice any any rituals uh, you cannot do karma yoga even without some belief some uh, kind of self surrender that is uh, self surrender property as anga means as a sadhana as a means as a method the real self surrender is angi angi means the 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 the, the, the real the real thing of is bhakti is only an anga or a part that is idea behind no we will take up another very very important relevant subject how does such a man live in this world if he has practiced this self surrender so the practical advantages one thing he will be totally free from any kind of sorrow worry anxiety complaint delusion depression or anything because Uh, whatever happens he can he interprets as a gift coming from god pain and pressure suffering or enjoyment everything is coming from the lord so he actually he starts practicing an equanimity of mind which is not different from the equanimity of a siddha prajna mentioned in the to in the second chapter of bhagavad gita or uh, jivan mukta in the advaitic tradition somebody who has realized that brahman is only reality and he is in his true nature he is not different from brahman that is that is jiva brahma ikya now the advaitin who has become a jivan mukta liberated even while living by uh, by the to the realization of jivan jivan mukti or moksha that person also will have the same equanimity of mind it doesn't think is coming from god or not but it is all impermanent good and bad pain and pressure all this all part of the game of life the world is like that he doesn't expect anything permanent uh, from this impermanent world which is considered as mithya so that's why i mentioned earlier at the experience level uh, uh, advaitic the supreme advaitic experience and property are the same remember only at the experience level from a spiritual perspective there is no difference from a dialectical perspective from a metaphysical perspective from a doctrinal perspective there may be differences secondly uh he will feel uh, <laughs> this is interesting he will feel very grateful to us those who revile him who may insult him uh, this is very similar in some ways uh, in some uh, what you find find you find among christian mystical tradition you find so they will be grateful to those who may insult them because by taking all this insult they think their prarabdha karmas are being exhausted so there is an old statement asammana tapo vruddhi sammana hi tapakshayaka if people go on honoring you then your austerity your spiritual wealth will be drained out slowly it will decrease if people honor you all the time if people dishonor you they take a fraction of your spiritual merits so it's always um, <laughs> it's always to the disadvantage of those 
who are insulting you again you find uh, suffering for jesus everything for jesus suffering the martyrdom idea that is actually part of this of course ramarija doesn't talk about it but this martyrdom idea you find in many of the uh, western mystical traditions in the abrahamic mystical traditions you know so if somebody uh, criticizes you gives you trouble actually they will come but remember uh, there is a statement in the uh, i think the city of god in augustine those who seek the uh, unpleasant experiences for others by and then thereby they want to benefit spiritually they are causing spiritual uh, <laughs> burden to other people so you provoke a person to insult you thinking that if they if he insults you you will be spiritually benefited actually you are turning you are making him a sinner you are forcing him to become a sinner you are forcing him to commit sinful deeds so then the sinful will the sins will fall upon you back that's a very funny statement this is very interesting but if anybody uh, anybody uh, dishonors you so uh, then it will be to your advantage so asammana tapo tapo vruthi if somebody dishonors you then it will be to your advantage spiritually speaking if somebody honors you too much and you also become you identify yourself with this honorable things then slowly a fraction of your spiritual merit they will take they with the account will be transferred to their account advantage they be credited to their account that's the idea behind so many many there are many wonderful ideas which is striking resemblance to some of the mystical traditions of western i mean abrahamic traditions mostly jewish and christian tradition you find so we'll have interaction now you are most welcome to ask questions okay thank you you mentioned that for prapatti we need to have we need to practice sarvadharma pratyaj namely we need adhikari for prapatti is one who has realized the futility of all other means this he appears to be similar to the quality of uh, vairagya in sarvadharma chatushta so No, 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 no. It's a different. It's a it different. We should not vaguely uh, compare things and say things are all the same. No, that's wrong. Why Ragyam in the Sadhana Sadhusthe Sambati is a fundamental quality for anyone to practice uh, Advaita Sadhana. It is uh, the fundamental prerequisite in a general way for all spiritual seekers. but this particular doctrine in the ramanuja system it is intimately linked to uh, devotion bhakti as a supreme means for one spiritual fulfillment because it is it is a state that you reach uh, maybe yeah, you may have practiced bhakti for many many generations many life cycles in this life you are born with this idea of total surrender in the case of swami adbhuta ananda ji in example he practiced total self surrender so when he listened to uh, discussions of uh, upanishad and other scriptures the meaning became so obvious to him in a way that even scholars won't be able to understand because as a result of this self surrender his whole mind undergoes a complete transformation it uh, gets a strong spiritual orientation such a mind can easily capture higher ideas he doesn't have to practice vairagya not at all vairagya will be there in any person vairagya means total detachment to his worldly things that will be an integral part of any person who has practiced prapatti is called prapanna that is true no doubt about it but vairagyam non attachment alone will not make a person prapanna it is not even enough to practice, to be able to practice prapatti so prapatti in real practice becomes the natural and the only option for a highly evolved so evolved soul 
That's an important thing to remember. So, such a person, there are many, many other important things, you know. His mind also will be free from all fluctuations because it is well settled. So, the result of practicing Vairagya, he will get. But Vairagya itself is not property. Property is a far higher principle in devotion philosophy. Vairagya is one of the prerequisites for you to go to the kindergarten of Advaita Sadhana, so to speak. Is Vairagya plus Ishwar Pranidhana or Bhakti? Yeah, Ishwar Pranidhana can, of course, can be interpreted as uh, property, but uh, again, it may be the beginning of one's devotional disciplines, Ishwar Pranidhana. It is not prapatti. So you find the prapatti ideal is not uh, entirely uh, a, a part of Vishistha Advaita system. This prapatti ideal you find in so many of Shankaracharya's devotional hymns. So many. Ananda Lekhari, Bhavan Yashtagam, Saudhira Lekhari, Siva Abhradakshamavana Stotram, Devi Abhradakshamavana Stotram. All you, everywhere you find this property ideal. But that is the supreme achievement of devotional disciplines. That's why I mentioned, property is the same as Jiva Brahma Ikyam, the ultimate Brahma Jnana, knowledge of Brahman. It's the same because that's a Brahma Jnani and a Prapanna, somebody who has practiced property, looks alike in everything. The only difference is if they give a, start giving a talk, uh, Brahmachnani will tell you everything in this world is related. So you don't worry, you remain detached. A prapanna, a person who has practiced prapati will tell you everything is the will of the Lord. So you remain detached. Same mental equilibrium you find. That's why I mentioned earlier, at the highest level, at the experience level, they are the same. But then again, we are now studying, uh, we are making an elaborate study of a non advaitic system of philosophy. So it's my duty to be truthful to the system that I'm discussing now. If I say they're all the same, I will be, uh, it'll be uh, untruthful, it may not be sincere to the uh, great tradition that we are discussing now. But again, having said that, you find, you know, this property idea you find in many of the devotional hymns. Not in the Bhasha literature, but the devotional hymns of Shankaracharya. I find. Gadistum, Gadistum, Tomega, Bhavani. That's how Bhavani Astagam ends. Ananya Gaditum is one of the important requirements of every jiva for, practi for practicing property, according to Ramanuja. Ananyagatittu, not turning towards anyone else at the supreme destination, supreme refuge. So, you find the same? Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. I, I have a question. Yeah, please, please. Uh, the, um, regarding the uh, Guru Bhakti, do you have any encouragements uh, or cautions about the better and not so good ways of going about uh, guru Bhakti in practice, I mean in concept, no problem, but in practice. Guru, guru Bhakti, Guru Bhakti. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yes, that's true. So, in, in the Guru tradition you find uh, um, a true spiritual seeker uh, should have respect for what he learns from a teacher, Guru. Uh, and also, he should have a great uh, sense of sanctity and sacredness towards what he learns from a teacher. Because even at the academic level, in the ordinary or level, empirical level, uh, your sense of identity and your sense of respect for what you learn is intrinsically connected to the person from whom you learn. That is true. Uh, so. Uh, it is intimately connected, but Guru is never uh, 
a substitute for the supreme lord not at all see ramanuja himself uh, was taught advaita by a great professor of advaita uh, yadav prakasha yadav prakasha was not actually a true representative of shankaracharya's advaita philosophy in his in his full form so he became he was very very doctrinal and uh, this happened to many uh, other uh, non advaiting uh, teachers who had a misfortune to learn advaita from the wrong kind of teachers the advaita has got the danger of uh, being misinterpreted to be some kind of a uh, dry intellectual Uh, life denying god denying uh, dry intellectual doctrine which it is not that's a reality so this departure from the mainstream advaita teachings of shankaracharya it happened in many places among the scholarly circles this happened when ananda tirtha we say madhvacharya was learning advaita from his teacher so ramanuja is learning from vyadav prakasha so it happened uh, to many uh, this happened so sir ramanuja openly refuted i mean he did not refuse a very polite humble man but he disagreed with his own teacher and the same thing happened to many others in the subsequent times they started their own schools but that doesn't in any way take the greatness of advaita from it Uh, from Sh- there isn't taking the greatness any 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 aspect of greatness from shankaracharya or his advaita system any system can be misinterpreted even the ramanuja system can be terribly misunderstood it is being misinter- misinterpreted frequently see you can talk about prapatti but you should be somebody like swami adbhudananda then you become a, then you see man like saint augustine he had some kind of an experience he heard some noise and but there's a beginning of a new life in his life please that doesn't happen to many most people it happened so that's why vedantins and indian philosophers will always fall back upon the doctrine of law of karma and the reincarnation they will tell you that because of your previous life cycles and uh, spiritual disciplines you may practiced in your previous life cycles you became fit for this complete transformation for practicing prapatti in this life otherwise it would not be possible that's how they put it so logically there is uh, truth in that that is according to me so very often advaita was misinterpreted for example you know ramanuja and also yadav prakash and no yeah yeah the prakash also though he was an advaitin so you find they they call advaita maya vada advaita is not maya vada maya is not a category in advaita system at all maya is just a metaphor that philosopher uses as a term but shankaracharya did not say that maya is some fundamental category not at all so people put him that way and they also calling that he is like like uh, shunyavadins uh, nast they say nai vainashikas like that they would tell you ramanuja is in madhvas they did that because they also misinterpreted advaita so many uh, uh, fanatical advaitins also misinterpret shankaracharya advaita and take away from it all is sweet beautiful Uh, uh, sublime ideas of devotion. They 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 don't refer to it at all. They mostly enjoy the uh, the dialectical ideas and they 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 exhaust themselves by indulging in these dialectical confrontations, for which Shankaracharya is not responsible. <laughs> okay. I told you again many times, all the most beautiful. Devotion poems in Sanskrit language were written by the greatest of Advaitins, and they tell you Shankaracharya rejected bhakti. So that sort of that problem is there, you know. Yeah. 
It's just like suppose you read Kant critical pure reason and you completely ignore his critical practical reason. And then you uh, evolve, you interpret Kantian philosophy exclusively on the basis of critical pure reason. That's absolutely stupid. Because of, without the critical practical reason, Kantian philosophy becomes incomplete, becomes um, lopsided. So this happens. Okay, thank you for the question. Pranam Maharaj, yeah. uh, this is a little bit off of the subject that we've been discussing tonight. Um, but I'd like to ask you about Kundalini awakening. Yeah. Um, I have some friends that want to have me attend a one day intensive uh, in which uh, the Kundalini is uh, supposedly awakened. It costs $500 and uh, the teacher is not going to physically be there themselves. Uh, and I, I kind of have my doubts and what I've read, um, from, uh, from the Holy Mother, it, when people ask her about wake, awakening the Kundalini, she would say, uh, do Japa and meditation and that w it will awaken eventually. It'll awaken in time. It's not like something that's going to happen, uh, right away. And, um. Uh, I would like to get your opinion about uh, like uh, immediate Kundalini awakening in a uh, in a, a class, uh, you know, costing five hundred dollars. Anyway, say I would say nothing about this course that you are talking about, or whether it is a, 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 or to what extent it is rational or not. I have no opinion. Nothing. Left to myself, I would not spend $500 for this kind of thing. That's all I can say. So, uh, beyond that, I won't go. And I have no opinion in, on this subject. Thank you for this question. Thank you. Hello, Swami. Yeah. I was wondering... Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, trying to understand. It seems that, from what you're saying, that all the paths lead, like including Ramanuja's path, leads to Advaita realization. Do I understand you correctly? That that, that they all, the Madhas, Ramanujas, yeah. Chakras, they all lead to Advaita realization, not yeah. Nubuti? Yeah, I'll tell you. So Ramanuja's system also, in his highest, at his highest level of prapatti, it leads to a spiritual experience, which is, as an experience, not different from the experience of oneness and unity spiritual unity and oneness of Advaita. But you may not call it Advaitic experience because the when we use, use the word Advaitic experience, it has its own definitions, its own methods because it's a term used in philosophical books. But uh, the spiritual nature, spiritual stage of a person who has realized, please underline the word realized, yeah, the truth of prapati, which is the ultimate uh, road leading to liberation in Ramana system. The spiritual feeling of such a person will be more or less the same as that of a Jivan Mukta or Advaita tradition. That's all I can say. Okay, that's all. Maharaj, um, now I want to ask about Sister Navedita's name. Uh, she's given the name, and that suggests uh, devotional surrender as well. Yeah. Um, uh, can you um, yeah. can you perhaps expound upon how she lives up to that name so well? Yeah, actually, it's a supreme example of uh, this self surrender, Nivedita. See, Nivedita became a totally different personality after coming in contact Swami, with Swami Vivekananda. A totally different personality. So, she was uh, a most restless intellectual diehard who, who used to uh, ask questions to Swamiji, put questions to Swamiji on many, many subjects. But later what she became uh, shows that she was really uh, um, 
uh, what her name implies, the dedicated one. It's a great example. The total transformation of the personality. That's an important thing that happens to anyone who practices prapati or the surrender. And the way they talk and act and behave will, will undergo a transformation. The way they look at the world also will undergo a complete transformation. So this is, this is a very interesting thing about Sister Nibedida. Yeah. Namaste Maharaj. Namaste, Namaste. Uh, my, my question is, you mentioned about the nine ways of following Bhakti. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, described in Bhagavata Purana. Yeah. Uh, my question is, there are so many paths. So when you follow the Bhakti path and there may be the path of the Guru or even whatever we might call it as the Advaitic practice, uh, is it good to follow one path or both approaches? But if you follow an approach and you don't follow it to the full extent, will it have, will it have any negative ex, uh, yeah. impact? Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on those, Maharaj? Yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, all paths are equally valid only from the highest standpoint, from the state of experience that they all lead you to. But not at the level, not when you look at them as different means, but only when you take into consideration the ultimate destination, the ultimate result of all this. So, uh, having strong faith in the instructions of a teacher, if a person sincerely follows, then his mind also begins to evolve. And these nine disciplines are recommended as simple methods. But even to be able to practice any of these nine, you need a formal instruction from a teacher. It's an important thing. So, uh, a, t a teacher will give you not only the instruction, but also he will transfer into your personality certain aspects which are uh, which are absent in your personality, which, which are necessary for you to pursue that path. So, all these can lead, see Sravanam, uh, Kirtanam, you find great uh, musicians who are singing all their life, you can find some of them uh, composed uh, tens of thousands of compositions. Music just flow through their personality. Because suddenly you, 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 they connected themselves to a higher transcendental source of all wisdom and knowledge. Taratyagraja, Purantradasa, many, many. In all traditions you find this. So I'll give you an example. So, Sravanam, Kirtanam are examples in this. You hear, you listen to great uh, songs and musical things and you compose, you sing and all that. And then those who always remember, that is a higher stage. And then those who, uh, those who spend long years practicing spiritual disciplines in places of worship, those who spend their whole lifetime teaching the ancient scriptures. So all of them, all these practices, at some stage take a spiritual seeker beyond the empirical. So, each of these nine parts is equally valid. Actually, these are mentioned here, recommended here, as different ways by which you can connect yourself to the spiritual source, the original source. Any, any of these can, okay. If you go to a temple, if you are a priest, if you are a musician, if you are uh, it's in some hope, Employed in some in, the, in in some kind of activity in the social in social life, karma yoga, then you can think of Lord and do your work, whatever work that may be. And also, you can one day you can listen to these hymns. That's also one way. So all all of this uh, can be practiced. In fact, all the possibilities of connecting our mind to the transcendental spiritual source are implied in this sloka. 
ശ്രവണം കീർത്തനം വിഷ്ണു സ്മരണം പാദസേവനം അർച്ചനം വന്ദനം ദാസ്യം സഖ്യം ആത്മനിവേദനം നയൻ നവധാപത്തി ഓൺലി before you actually enter spiritual life mm-hmm. so this is a very important this is a big problem in all traditions so you know most of the religious traditions they uh, they force some do's and don'ts on the practitioners that is at the religious level the hierarchical level the priest will tell you you didn't practice so we do chant vishnu sahasrama for 3 months so you may have to do some uh, puja or something it may cost 150 dollars so you can do that then then you can have penance actually this happens in all traditions that is totally unspiritual so that's the difference between religious and spiritual at the religious level oh you did something wrong because you forgot it or you didn't do that so the big problem waiting for you that is not spirituality it is religion a religion is a man made structure do and don'ts spirituality is different so those who have got a spiritual approach they are the least worried about those things absolutely no worried the people normally people become worried oh some stars are against you some astrological things are not in your favor so you have to do the these are all religious uh, doctrine not spiritual doctrines this you find everywhere the church also wanted money for it to survive so they they laying on the hand all day. so hindu hindu priests are also uh, didn't spare the helpless people you know gullible people in all traditions but at least they didn't do any harm <laughs> nothing nothing violent but in some tradition that problem also is there so i, I but i tell you one thing one should not worry too much about this you on the other hand suppose you don't have money 100 dollars to spend for this sort of penance oh then you the mind tortures you i don't have 100 money 100 dollars so i have to do this then you say you just one minute you pray to the lord the problem solved that is spirituality but you worry and you lose sleep because you don't you are not able to perform a ritual costing 100 dollars that is religion a religion is uh, subservient to spirituality you should practice charity that's true you should practice um, uh, compassion for helping others everyone you, you there's nothing you should practice rituals they are very good rituals do have the significance rituals are important they do have a significance but remember whenever it crosses the boundary and becomes doctrinal doctrinaire then it becomes unspiritual that's the idea behind it without rituals uh, spiritual values also cannot survive not because rituals are the custodians of spiritual values but because rituals are necessary for the common people to practice some values in life look at the, church, the catholic church many of the great teachings the, the theological classics the music the art the painting the sculpture all these are contributions of the catholic church remember but you can communicate with your god in a cave fine no problem but if you should be like a ramana maharshi before that you don't practice doing it <laughs> you go crazy if you become a ramana maharshi you don't have to go to a temple <laughs> so temples rituals establishments organizations do have their significance they because they enrich society and human civilization which in some ways 
promote spirituality no doubt about it okay thank you om shanti 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 hari ki om tat sat sri ram krishna pranamastu